title of my study is role of mri in spinal trauma introduction mri plays a crucial role in evaluating and detecting spinal trauma occult, occult fractures soft tissue and spinal cord abnormalities which may not be apparent on other imaging modalities can be easily detected on mri aim of the study is to evaluate the role of mri as a non invasive tool in patients with spinal trauma and to correlate the mri findings with the neurological status of the patient methods the study was conducted on 50 patients in the department of radiology diagnosis gmc jammu and we took detailed uh, history and examination was done according to the american spinal cord injury association impairment scale so there are five grades grade a is complete motor and sensory impairment grade e is no motor or sensory deficit in grade b c and e the sensory function is intact in grade b there is complete motor impairment in c there the power is less than 3 and in grade e the power is more than 3 so mri the protocol consisted of t1 and t2 weighted sagittal uh, t2 and t1 and t2 weighted sequences in sagittal and axial plane stir in sagittal plane and gr in c and gre sequence was applied whenever required so this these are the inclusion and the exclusion criteria now the imaging uh, so the first case is uh, traumatic anterior esthesis of l5 over f1 then uh, in the second case we see there is compression fracture of the l2 vertebra there is a dark sclerotic band that is commonly seen in these compression fractures with central wedging so this case there is a uh, dislocation of c5 vertebral body with the retropulsion of the fracture fragment and we see that there is a breach in the continuity of the ligaments the all the pll and the uh, ligamentum flavum as depicted by the arrows along with the uh, cord hyperintensity suggestive of cord edema then in this case we see that the vertebral bodies they look normal there is no evidence of any obvious fractures but on observing closely we see that there is a breach in the continuity of the ligamentum flavum posteriorly as depicted by the red arrow and edema in the posterior ligamentous complex then hyperintensity is noted within the cord suggestive of cord edema and subtle hyperintensities are also noted in the vertebral body as depicted by the orange arrow this is suggestive of bony contusion then in this case we see there is distraction fracture dislocation of the c6 vertebra with disruption of all the three columns of the ligament the all pll and the posterior ligamentous complex then there is cord edema along with a tiny pre vertebral collection that is de uh, depicted by the arrow then in this case we see that there is a burst fracture of the d12 vertebra with retropulsion of the fracture fragment and it is seen causing moderate canal stenosis it, we can clearly see in the axial image that there is moderate canal stenosis associated with the uh, marrow edema and also note that there is a heterogeneous signal intensity within the cord on t2 there is hypo intensity surrounded by the hyper intensity so this is suggestive of cord hemorrhage then this is another case again we see there is a fracture dislocation of the c5 vertebra and we see that there is disruption of all the three ligamentous all the three columns of the ligaments and note here that there is a hyp hypo intensity noted within the cord surrounded by the hyper intensity so this is suggestive of hemorrhage and this was confirmed on the gre sequence to be hemorrhage seen as foci of blooming as pointed by the red arrows then uh, this case we see there is an epidural hematoma that is seen causing compression of the cord extraction then this was the case of a uh, kyphotic spine uh, following trauma there was a burst fracture with traumatic disc extrusion now this is seen compressing the cord but there was no associated signal abnormality within the cord then this is a case of a uh, complete cord transection just like epidural hematoma it is very rare because spine is mostly flexible so here we see that there is disruption of the all pll and the posterior ligamentous complex and total breach in the continuity of the cord suggestive of complete cord transaction so the results the mean age of the patients was 45 years 35 males 15 females the mode of injury in our study was rta fall from height and slip injuries in 22 patients it was rta majority of the injuries occur in the cervical spine so this is a table depicting my results then again the commonest site of injury was the cervical spine isolated fractures were seen in 10 patients the other findings we saw were cord injury uh, disc rupture paravertebral collection epidural hematoma and ligament injury
In cord injury, we had uh, cord edema, hemorrhage, and transaction. Then patients with no cord abnormality, there was improvement in 35 out of the 38 patients. In cases of cord edema, all nine patients showed improvement. In cord hemorrhage, they, in both the patients, there was no improvement. In cord transaction, uh, there was one case and the patient expired. And in, cord, in patients with only fracture, all 10 showed improvement. So this is the distribution of the patients of the study according to the AIS at the time of admission and at the time of discharge. So using the AIS, the most common pattern was incomplete spinal injury. Second most common was uh, spinal trauma without cord injury and least common was complete cord injury. The most commonly observed uh, MRI pattern that is cord edema was seen in 75% of the people. Cord hemorrhage was seen in 16.6%. Cord hemorrhage was associated with complete spinal cord injury in both subjects. One expired on follow-up and the other showed no improvement. Cord edema was associated with complete spinal cord injury in one patient and incomplete in eight patients. On follow-up, there was complete recovery in six and the other two showed good functional recovery. So the discussion, the study by Gupta et al. Uh, in the study by Gupta et al., the most common cause was spinal, of spinal trauma was RTA and the most common site was the vical spine. In the study, uh, Parchari conducted a study on 62 patients and again, the patients undergoing MRI, they were analyzed according to the AIS. And his study demonstrated that the presence of a sizable focus of hemorrhage had larger cord edema and more severe initial gray, grade with AIS and poor recovery at follow-up. Then there was another study by Miyangi and uh, it showed that there was a significant correlation between the severity of the spinal cord injury and the presence or absence of cord hemorrhage, edema, soft tissue injuries, etc. So in conclusion, uh, the various MRI findings in acute spinal cord uh, injury, they correlate well with the initial clinical findings according to the AIS and can be helpful to the clinician in predicting the outcome and extent of recovery in patients with spinal cord injury. So these are my references. Thank you.